In this video, we're going to talk about double integrals and polar coordinates. Well, this video accompanies section 5.3 of the Calculus 3 textbook by OpenStax. And we'd like to evaluate a double integral and polar coordinates. So uh, in polar coordinates, we can think of rectangles as still having the two coordinates go between two constants. Uh, you know, when X was between A and B and Y was between C and D, we got a rectangle because it was the rectangular coordinate system. For polar coordinates, we got R and theta. And if R is between A and B and theta is between alpha and beta, uh, we get this, which is the uh, sort of part of a uh, disk or washer. And uh, these are the shapes that are going to be the easiest to work with. Uh, for polar coordinates. It's a sector of a disk or washer. So let's do a quick uh, concept check on writing out the intervals for a polar rectangle. So we've got a polar rectangle shown over here on the right, and then we've got some possible choices for the interval for R that accompanies that. Pause the recording if you need a moment. And you should find that the correct answer is B, that R is between one and two. This inner radius uh, with the orange line is uh, half of a circle with radius one. And then this outer radius is half of a circle with radius two. So R goes from one to two. So R was the part in between here. All right, same uh, rec polar rectangle, um, but now looking at the interval for the polar coordinate theta. And you should have been able to identify that theta goes between pi over two and three pi over two. So we're starting here at the top, we're at pi over two, and then going down to the bottom, we're at three pi over two. So pi over two to three pi over two. Uh, correct answer is C. Now, if we had one of these sectors of a disk or a washer, uh, and we wanted to define the integral over it, We'd want to do the same thing we did in the rectangular case, and that is break it up into a bunch of smaller polar rectangles. Uh, and so we draw a bunch of different uh, concentric arcs uh, of different radii, uh, and then we draw out a bunch of radial lines for different theta values. Uh, and we do want a fixed delta theta and a fixed delta r. And then each individual little shape will look like a small version of the bigger shape. Uh, and the indexing, I think, R goes uh, from I equals 1 to M, and then theta goes from J equals 1 to M. Uh, now, we then want to know what the area of one of these is. Um, and it's stated here that the area is uh, r star times delta r times delta theta, um, though that may not be obvious if you haven't taken trigonometry really recently. So let's uh, go into more detail on how to get the area of one of these little pieces. The r ij star theta ij star is a sample point, just like it was with x ij star y ij star uh, for the rectangular case. And it's just any point on the inside. You can pick whatever point you want. That's what the star means, that it could be any point in the inside of this shape. Uh, but it's got an R value and it's got a theta value, right? Um, now, when we actually want to find the area of this, we're going to approximate it as a trapezoid, right? And it is almost a trapezoid. So if you remember, a trapezoid is a parallelogram where you've got uh, uh, base one and a base two that are parallel. Uh, and then you've got the other sides that are not parallel. And then there's your height. Uh, and the area of a parallelogram is the average of those bases. So B1 plus B2 over two, or one half base one plus base two times the height. So there's the area of a trapezoid using base one and base two for that. And what we want to think about here is that uh, base one and base two are these two curved pieces. 
So of course, in a trapezoid, they're not curved lines, and that's why it is an approximation. <clears throat> the other piece of information you need is uh, the arc length formula for an arc of a circle. So if you do have a circle of radius r and you go an angle theta, then the measure of this piece of the circle uh, is s equal to r times theta. Uh, and then, of course, if uh, theta is the full 2 pi, you get the circumference of the circle 2 pi r because uh, you've gone all the way around. That same circumference formula works for smaller pieces of a circle as well. So we're going to use this uh, formula uh, for the base one and the base two. So base one is going to be this one, right, where this is ri, and then the angle theta is this delta theta. So I guess we should oops. This is r sub i. Or maybe, actually, that's r sub i, and this is r sub i minus 1. Which means, if we just connect these in the same order, that this is b1. So that's like the bottom. And then this is b2, which is the top. So for the, for the theta part, they're both using delta theta, uh, but they have different distances from the center. And so they're using ri minus one uh, for the b2 and then ri for the b1. Obviously the one half is just one half. Uh, and then the height here is the delta r. So remember the height uh, of the trapezoid goes between the two bases. And of course that's what delta r is. It goes between the two bases. So that ends up being the height. So this writes the area of a trapezoid in terms of the parameters that we have for this shape uh, that we're working with, this polar rectangle. Uh, now we are just going to regroup some of these things. Uh, delta r is delta r. And then you can factor the delta theta off and it will be right here. And then the other stuff that's left is the one half ri plus i minus one. And that's what this is. This is the average of ri and ri minus one. So this does kind of assume that this point is in the middle, but again, it's an approximation. And so we can just say that that is about in the middle. Um, It'll all be fine once we take the limit later on anyway. So this ends up being our formula for the area of that, right? And that was shown here on the original slide, but now you know where that came from. Now we want to go from area to volume. We need to take the area of the base, which is the r star delta r delta theta, and we need to multiply by the height of this shape. Uh, and so the height will still be the value of the function at the sample point. Uh, and so we take the function, we just evaluate it at r star theta star. So area is here, and then that's height, and that will give you their volume. So that's the volume of one of these pieces. Of course, we need to sum up all the pieces, and it ends up being a double summation. i goes from 1 to m, j goes from 1 to n, and that will give you the total volume then in order to get the exact area between the curve and the xy plane, we need to take the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity. And that will be the double integral. So that's the definition of the double integral and in polar coordinates. Um, when we actually integrate these, the dA doesn't just turn into a dr d theta. There's actually an extra r there. Uh, so you'll have r's appearing when this part, right? Because it's one of your variables. But there's an extra r there. Uh, and that's because theta itself doesn't really have a length. You need r times theta to get the other dimension. So dr is kind of one dimension, and then r times d theta is the other one. So don't forget that extra r, uh, because that should be in all of your double integrals and polar coordinates.
Now, if it's not a polar rectangle, it could be some other shape that we could classify as a type one or type two polar region. Here's an example of a type one polar region where uh, it's bounded on the outside by uh, H2 of theta and then bounded on the inside by H1 of theta. So R is a function of theta there and R is a function of theta there. And then theta goes from alpha to beta. So this would be considered a type one general region for polar coordinates. Uh, and it would be pretty easy to uh, do the double integral there. We would have those two functions appearing as the limits of the inner integral. And then the two values of theta would just be a constants on the second integral. Um, now you could certainly do uh, the other, do it the other way where uh, theta is a function of r, um, but we won't be doing that in this class because those get a little too complicated. And so that's it for uh, this section. This presentation by Matthew Watts contains images and text from Calculus Volume 3 by Jed Herman and G. Strange, CC by NCSA OpenStax 2016.